No pain, no gain. We've all heard this famous mantra shouted from the mouths of good-hearted coaches. Personally, it was my mom screaming this at me in the middle of races, or sometimes when I was doing yard work. She really hated weeds. But are these people crazy? Is this even accurate, or are they on to something? I recently did a video on perceived exertion linked below, which was the first in a series of videos on the mental side of training and racing. Our brains play a huge role in our athletic endeavors, and understanding a few of these concepts could be the key to unlocking a new level of success in sport. Today we're talking about pain. How does pain play a role in training and racing? Can we actually improve our pain tolerance? And ultimately, does our relationship with pain increase our ability to win races? Because don't forget, it's all about performance. That's the name of the game. I pump up my tires and I oil my chain. Malcolm Gladwell writes, in a wide variety of human activity, achievement is not possible without discomfort. And he's right. Oftentimes, the best things in life are worth fighting for. Pain can be defined as an unpleasant sensory or emotional experience associated with actual or potential tissue damage. A few synonyms for pain could be agony, distress, discomfort, misery, and torture. As bad as it sounds, pain is actually a good thing when it comes to protecting our bodies from damage. When we experience pain, our body is firing quick messages to our brain to let it know that action must be taken before damage occurs. For example, when you place your hand on a burning hot stovetop, you immediately pull it off of that stovetop before you even realized what you've just done. This is how fast our bodies and our brains communicate with each other, and it's designed that way to keep us safe. But in endurance sports, our relationship to pain is not as black and white as a burning hot stovetop. Our brains know in a millisecond that that stovetop is bad. However, in bike racing, it's not that clear. Instead, it's as if the stovetop is slowly getting hotter and hotter, and it quickly turns into this challenge of how long can I keep my hand on the stovetop without giving in? Matt Fitzgerald, in his book, Brain Training for Running, writes, throughout exercise, the brain continually reads feedback signals from the muscles, blood, and elsewhere in order to answer the question, how much longer can my body go at the present work level before something terrible happens? When the answer received through various feedback channels is, in essence, not much longer, the brain reduces motor output to the muscles and generates those familiar feelings of pain and suffering to reinforce the reduction in output. So from a physical standpoint, Pain is good because it protects us from damage. However, from a mental standpoint, pain is our enemy because it limits us from being able to reach our true physical capacity. One of the most common misconceptions in endurance sports is that fatigue is what causes us to hit the wall. The difference between pain and fatigue is subtle but you can think of it this way. Fatigue is a physical thing that happens in your bodies, while pain is a mental thing that happens in your brain. It's actually our pain that ultimately causes us to pull the plug when we've had enough during a race. And as we learn from perceived exertion, this always happens before we reach our true physical capacity or when we're actually fatigued. 
This is why late in a race, you can barely turn the pedals to the finish line, but in those last few seconds, you can sprint past the person ahead of you. If we were truly physically fatigued, we wouldn't be able to sprint at the end of the race. Fitzgerald writes, the brain produces feelings of discomfort, pain, and loss of motivation in order to make the runner voluntarily slow down or stop, thus reinforcing the involuntary slowing aspect of fatigue. So it's both pain in our brain and fatigue in our muscles working simultaneously together against our will to persevere. But pain also plays a crucial role in racing in that it allows us to pace ourselves much more accurately. One study conducted on cyclists injected pain-numbing meds into their spine so that they could not feel their legs during intervals. You'd think that this would call for faster times and PRs, but quite the opposite. They would go so hard at the beginning of the interval that their body would force them to slow down and overall their times were slower. So it turns out that without pain, we won't be able to accurately determine a good pace for the given amount of time of an effort or a race. Pain is what helps us to find that optimal pace during a race or an effort. Michelle Brennan writes, it seems it's actually the pain level you're able to endure that determines the pace you can maintain. And when this is reduced, performance improves. You could call this the transitive property of pain. Improved pain tolerance equals improved pace equals improved performance. Fitzgerald writes, sport itself has a way of cultivating mental toughness. One of the ongoing debates when it comes to pain tolerance is whether or not it's something that you are just born with or it's something that you develop through life experiences. And I don't necessarily think it's one or the other, but rather a mix of the two. Alex Hutchinson touches on this topic when he writes, pain tolerance is both a trainable trait and a limiting factor in endurance. Pain tolerance is something that we're born with, but it's also something that we can develop. In this study on pain tolerance in adults, the researchers looked at the childhood adversity level of each subject. Between low adversity, medium adversity, and high adversity, those right in the middle had the highest pain tolerance. These people had to endure struggles as children, but they were not overbearing on their life. This goes to show that pain tolerance is something that can be developed throughout life experiences. It's been proven over and over again that athletes can endure more suffering than the average Joe. This totally makes sense. The athletes who push themselves to their bodily limits over and over again should be able to withstand a cold hand test. I mean, this is small potatoes compared to a 200 mile gravel event. If pain tolerance is something that we can train and develop, they've already spent countless hours grinding out grueling events and tough intervals. Alex Hutchinson in his book Endure writes, pain can be strangely satisfying to the highly motivated athlete. Subsequent studies have mostly confirmed these findings. Athletes, and especially endurance athletes, are consistently willing to tolerate more pain. One of the reasons this is true is because of the pursuit of pain that sports requires. The athlete is willingly putting themselves into uncomfortable and painful situations over and over again. The scientific word for this is desensitization, and it can be defined as a form of learning in which repeated presentation of a stimulus leads to a weakening of a response. The more you put yourself in the hurt locker, 
the more you can tolerate it. The interesting thing about pain is that everyone perceives it differently. What might be a piece of cake for one guy might be excruciating for the next guy. And your personal relationship with pain will have a huge impact on your success as an endurance athlete. Hutchinson writes, pain is unavoidable and how you handle it is intimately tied to how well you perform. Embrace an appetite for suffering. I think it's important to clarify that there is a difference between pain and suffering. Fitzgerald defines it like this. Pain encompasses the raw sensation of discomfort associated with fatigue, screaming muscles, burning windpipes, and so forth. Suffering, on the other hand, is a layer of emotional unpleasantness that emerges from the runner's conscious reaction to pain. So pain is the external sensation while suffering is the internal reaction to that sensation. And as we all know, pain is an essential ingredient when it comes to training and racing. We oftentimes have to put ourselves in painful situations and uncomfortable circumstances to be able to get stronger and win races. And while pain itself is inevitable in endurance sports, and we don't have much control over that, we do have some control over the suffering that this pain causes. I really like how this study on pain opens up their discussion. Pain is an inevitable part of life. If that is the bad news, the good news is that there are numerous strategies for regulating pain and the negative emotions that are associated with the anticipation and experience of pain. And on that note, that's the end of this video. This video is just pain tolerance explained. In my next video, pain tolerance applied, we'll actually look at some of the strategies that we can use to improve our ability to endure pain. So that's all I've got for this video. If you liked it, be sure to subscribe and share with your friends. And if you're looking for a coach, check out the Ignition Coach Co. website linked below. And until next time, y'all stay rad.